This is my uh, 1959 Fender Harvard that I've had for a little over a year now. I got it off of Craigslist, and uh, it was really all original. It's in terrible shape <laughs> aesthetically, cosmetically. It's all rusted out. I'll show the rest of it some other time. But I wanted to get the um, Selenium Rectifier out of it. So I put a uh, 1N4007 in the bias supply there and uh, started looking at the resistor values around it because the the uh, silicon diode is so much more efficient than the selenium rectifier um, that it that it threw the values all off. So where that red lead is right there um, you want that to be negative 27 volts and it was and about negative 36 volts, I think. So um, I started um, looking at the resistor values and that one that um, the transformer tap comes into that's on the positive side of the diode was way off. It's supposed to be, I'll have to look back at the schematic, but I think it's supposed to be 5,600 uh, ohms if I'm not mistaken somewhere in there no 6800 anyway I can't remember what it is it was off and and so I I put the correct value there um, but it's really that negative side that's so important as it relates to setting the um, the bias into the circuit so I was trying to think of of how I was going to get that to work out and um, I'm, I'm using this uh, this old decade resistor box here, so I just solder tacked in uh, a couple of leads there that I have alligatored over to the um, the decade box, and so I set it at um, oh that's what it well that's what that resistor was supposed to be because I, I set it back up for the, the video real quick, but it's supposed to be 56k. Um, that, that again feeds the, the rest of the circuit with that negative voltage. And so if I flip it on here, keep my hand away from the power switch, look back there on the Tech DMM4040, it's um, 36, negative 36 volts. So, and it'll, it'll bounce around right in there. So turn that back off and um, I'm actually gonna I'm gonna switch this back down to 33k. Is that right? Or was it 37? I think it's 33. We'll we'll figure it out together. Um, so when I switch that back on. It should settle down a little bit. 29.6. Well, let's go. Let's go a little bit farther here. Do 32. All right, let's see. 29. All right, let's go a little bit more. Let's go down to 30K. That's just about right, right there. So anyway, the point was, you know, when you're, when you're changing these components, they all have a, a related um, relationship to one another and um, sometimes you just have to do some in testing or do some testing to um, to get the right value and to make sure you're kind of feeding the circuit with what it's supposed to have and one thing's for sure you know um, these were at best you know 10 percent components most of the time when they were built and uh, and sometimes you know way way off of that so 
when you get in an amp, it's really important to test out the resistors, make sure that they are reasonably where they're supposed to be. You know, they're very rarely, unless they're, um, you know, high tolerance resistors going to be just dead on and that's okay. You know, these circuits were built with a certain amount of, of tolerance and, and variance in mind. Um, but you know, if it's something that's way off, then it's best to, to kind of look at the amp holistically and tweak and make sure, especially for something like this, you know, it's an amp that I want to use and I want to play every day. Um, so I don't necessarily have a problem taking a resistor out of it that, that Lupe put in there, you know, 60 years ago, um, because she would want me to still be playing it. And that's what we're supposed to be doing with these things. Um, this one in particular is not a, um, you know, Bonaceum. <laughs> it's not a, uh, not a museum quality, uh, amp. I love it. And, uh, and it means a lot to me, but, um, it means the most when we're able to play them. And you'll notice also that that's why I don't have any of the old Astron or any of the old um, Mini Mite or whatever they were, Electrolytics, because, you know, um, those components were bad. They just were. I've got the, I've got the bag of them right here, and I, I you know, I keep them around because I um, like to preserve the, the history of the amp in that way. But I like to preserve its ability to continue being an amp by replacing the things that need to be replaced. And um, I think that we hold on to old components longer than we should to the detriment of power transformers and output transformers. And um, forgive the shaky camera work. This is just a, an iPhone recording. But you know, while I was doing this and while I was using some of this old um, test equipment, I wanted to show a, a real example of, of how it's used. And so I've got my negative 28 volts, and I just need to go to my pile and find a, a 30K or thereabouts resistor. So I'm going to be doing more of these, and uh, as I repair amps, as I work on things, um, you know, I've got some, some cool old stuff that I'm going to be repairing. I'll uh, upload more. Y'all have a good night. Slight addendum to, <laughs> to that last um, section there. The bias was supposed to be negative 27 volts. Um, so I had to actually go down to a 27K resistor, which is what that fellow is right there between the old selenium rectifier and that... Um, that Sprague resistor right there, or capacitor, excuse me. Um, so, yeah, it was supposed to be negative 27, not not negative 28. And so I'm measuring from there to ground, and it is negative 27.1, which is about as good as you're going to get. So um, a little different type of resistor, but that's okay. If it bothers me one day I'll replace it for a carbon comp just like uh, the other ones that are in there so just wanted to follow up with that and and you know your your mileage will vary on this so um, again I would I would do some testing to to see how it shakes out for you you get one of these these old amps um, or something with a selenium rectifier and you change it to a diode, which I would highly recommend, especially if it's something that you're going to be using um, to just go ahead and put in that new component that's going to do a better job and uh, won't fail on you and take out other uh, things when it does. Um, so, you know, go ahead and replace those diodes, but just know that, again, you're, you're going to have to adjust some resistor values around there if you want the rest of the amp to behave as it should um, the other thing just to mention is, you know, cosmetically, I, um, I cut those selenium rectifier leads way short. So you see cloth wire um, or cloth uh, uh, insulation rather on a very, very short piece of wire. So I may kind of tuck that, 
that um, insulation over the top of those diode leads just to kind of keep the aesthetic. I certainly don't have to do that, but um, but I may, uh, you know, again, kind of just to keep the aesthetic. But don't don't think that either one those are still connected to the circuit in any way. They're not, um, and two, there's no wire that's going to uh, make a, a cross connection, um, you know, into the circuit. Again, that that insulation is just there from an aesthetic uh, perspective. So, and I mentioned transformer lead earlier. I wasn't very specific. These Harvards um, have a bias supply, so it may not show up very well, but it's a red and blue, I guess it would be blue. The red and blue lead coming out of the transformer there um, feeds into the circuit, and that diode is what converts that to negative DC um, and, and uh, feeds that over to these resistors here to then feed the uh, the tubes that uh, that negative voltage. So anyway, just wanted to correct that it's uh, negative 27 volts, and that for me again it ended up being a 27k resistor that brought that um, bias voltage to negative 27 volts. All right, Adam White, y'all have a good night.